Welcome back to Trade in the Market. In this video, I'm going to show you how I used every tool inside Sports IQ to break down Greyhound races with precision and confidence. We're not just glancing at the form card, we're running full profiles with Grade IQ to measure dogs against historical grade benchmarks. We're using box plots to compare speed and consistency. We'll use bell curves to spot trends and timings, scatter graphs to understand race shape and running styles, and we're going to use a dog simulation to visualize realistic outcomes. And finally, trade sense to identify high confidence lay opportunities. I'll take you through the data race by race using real time tools to make smart, strategic decisions and then show you how it played out when the traps opened. If you've ever wanted to lay false favourites, understand how class impacts performance, or just use racing data the way the pros do, then you're in the right place. So let's dive into race number one. Let's kick things off at Doncaster 12.38, a grade B4 over 450 metres. I'll walk you through how I built the trade using Sports IQ's full tool set. We begin with grade IQ, which shows how each dog's recent runs stack up against benchmark times for this exact track, trip and grade. Trap 4, Robin's Girl, stands out immediately. Performance score of 66.28%, which is very solid. A true grade, exactly B4, which is today's race grade, and all five runs plotted in Zone 2 and 3, showing reliable competitiveness in this class. Trap 6, Seabrook, however, is a red flag just 20.99% performance score. The true grade is B6, and that's two levels below today's race. Her plotted five runs sit deep in zone five and six, meaning she's consistently running below the level needed even to place here. Grade IQ tells us she's not just slow, she's running out of grade. Now let's look at the bell curve to access both speed and consistency. Looking at Trap 4's curve, this is the furthest left and sharply peaked meaning she's both faster and more consistent. Trap 6's curve is pushed to the right and is very similar to Trap 4's curve, showing she's consistently slower overall. This makes her an unreliable runner and exactly what we could potentially lay. The box plot helps us to visualize each dog's fastest, slowest average and variability in one clean view. Think of this as a bird's eye view of the bell curves. And Trap 4 again performs well, it's got a tight box average time within the fast benchmark zone. Trap 6 shows a long right whisker, poor average and a wide standard deviation box, confirming she's slow and erratic. You want consistency to back and volatility to lay. In this scatter graph, we plot calculated speed versus sectional. Trap 4 clusters in the bottom left, which means it's fast from the boxes and fast to the line and Trap 6's dots are scattered along the bottom right and mid right, meaning she's slow out, slow overall and inconsistent. This confirms she's got no early pace and no staying speed either. Heading over to the simulation, we simulate 1 million races using recent data and here's what we get. Trap 4 wins 46.68% of simulations and Trap 6 just 2.8%. That gives Trap 6 an implied price of 35.71. Now heading back up to the top, let's see what TradeSense is giving us. And boom, to top it all off, TradeSense triggers a lay signal on Trap 6. The perfect final confirmation. It's got poor grade performance, no early pace, the simulation odds are far higher than the market suggests, and it's got poor consistency and finishing history. This is exactly the kind of dog TradeSense was built to identify. So for this race, I'll go ahead and place a lay bet on trap number six. As you can see, I was matched at odds of 9.4 for a five pound stake, and this gave me a risk of 42 pounds. Now let's head over to the race.
and there it is, exactly as the data suggested. Trap 4, Robins Girl delivers with a strong run and takes the win. Trap 6, Seabrook, our lay selection, runs to profile, finishing stone cold last. Grade IQ spotted Trap 6 going up in grade. The bell curves and box plots expose the consistency gap. The simulation screamed the value and Trade Sense confirmed it as a lay. So we laid Trap 6 at 9.4 and she never landed a blow. That's a textbook data led trade and a perfect way to kick off this video. Now let's dive straight into the second race. Romford 1317, an A9 grade over 400 meters. As always, we'll build our case using every powerful tool within Sports IQ's arsenal. The bell curves, the box plots, scatter graphs, grade IQ, a simulation. Finally, we'll top it off with the trade sense lay signal. So from a quick glance at the card, Trap 1 Two-Tone Blake stood out immediately. Despite boasting an ELO of 1091, its recent form was erratic. It's got zero wins in 12 trap attempts and only one win from seven at this grade. Combine that with poor last five finishing positions, this dog looks like a serious vulnerability. Now let's build the full profile. Looking at the bell curve for this race, Trap 1 is sitting far off the central peak, shared by the other runners. Its distribution is flatter and wider, indicating it has a broad range of performances, but few of them are competitive. Trap 6, Siomra Oyster, shows a strong, narrow peak, suggesting reliable speed. Trap 4 and Trap 2 also look steady, but Trap 1's curve is too dispersed and slow, highlighting inconsistency and lack of pace. Major red flags. Now over to the box plot. Trap 1 is sitting further right along the time axis, meaning slower. The whiskers also stretch quite far, with a wide green box, showing high variance and poor consistency. This dog's mean time is also slower than the average across the entire race. Compare that with Trap 2 and Trap 6, tight, compact boxes near the fast line. Again, Trap 1 continues to look out of its depth. Looking at the scatter graph, this is another layer of confirmation. Trap 1's dots are floating in the low right quadrant. This shows slower calculated times and weaker sectional performances. In fact, Trap 1 is the only runner here with consistently poor positioning. In contrast, Trap 6 cluster is both fast and well positioned, further backing up its speed superiority. Now let's turn to grade IQ. Trap 1 is marked with a true grade of A11, 69.39%, the worst in the field. That basically means it's consistently performing below the current A9 level. Every other dog is rated higher, with Trap 6 carrying a much stronger A7 rating and a massive 84.2% win chance according to Grade IQ. No surprise then that we're starting to form a clear lay profile around Trap 1. Looking at the dog simulation, the simulation seals the deal. Trap 1 only won 7.69% of 1 million simulations. Compare that with Trap 6, a whopping 52.71% win rate, and even Trap 3 has over 20%. Now time to check in with Trade Sense. And bloody boom, Trade Sense flags Trap 1 as delay. We've built a complete case using six independent visual tools, and the model agrees. Trap 1 is overhyped within the market and is a strong layer candidate. So acting on this profile, I jumped into the Betfair market early and offered a lay on Trap 1 at odds of 3.0, trying to catch some early backers chasing value. Incredibly, I was matched at 3.0 as you can see, and as the race approached, the price drifted all the way to 24s, and that gave me the perfect opportunity to cash out pre-race for a tidy 4.35 profit before a trap had even opened. It doesn't get much better than that. So with the profit secured, Let's see if our profile was correct. Let's roll the footage and see how it played out on the track. Race number nine here at uh, Romford, the hot favourite, well supported, Siomra Oyster. 
Kado Flardy racing. Didn't break that well, the six dog, but five and four did. And at bed number one, the black goes on here, Little Buell. Little Buell out in front for one. Now trying to head make headway is Sioma Royster in the stripes. Is now chasing this four dog. And at the third bend, this four, Little Buell is leading. Here comes a six, Sioma Royster getting a little bit nearer now. Four from six, race on. Little Buell here for Tommy Batchelor from the six. Four C's off the six. Kingdom Diamond back in third. Little Buell in trap four, stormed home for the win, while Siomra Oyster ran a solid second from trap six. But two-tone Blake in trap one, never a factor. That early price of 3.4 was wild, and the drift to 24s was the market correcting itself in real time. We read it perfectly. The tools told the story, the trade sent signal aligned, and the market eventually caught up. Profile made, zero risk taken, job done. And this race is the perfect example of why it's absolutely essential to profile every race, even when you're using TradeSense. TradeSense gives us a huge edge. It's data-driven, intelligent and consistent, but it's not a crystal ball. It's a tool, and the real edge comes when you layer your own profiling on top of that signal. When you break down the bell curve, dive into the box plot, explore the scatter, check grade IQ and simulate the outcomes, you're not just accepting a lay signal, you're validating it. You're building confidence within the trade. You're spotting mispricings early. And in this case, you could catch a 3.0 lay that drifts all the way to 24s before the her has even moved. If you rely solely on trade sense, you will profit. But when you combine trade sense with deep profiling, you can get in earlier, trade smarter and build long-term conviction within your strategy. So the next time TradeSense throws out a lay, don't just follow it, understand it. That's the pro difference. Now thanks again for watching the video. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe and give this video a like. And I shall see you in the next one. I've been James, this has been Greyhound Profiling, and we are all trading the market. Until next time, happy trading.